Hello everyone and welcome back to this series on how to rewind your brushless motors for your quadcopters. In the last video I showed you how I rewound my stators after uh, they, they had been smoked uh, pretty much where the windings had shorted out to each other or had just had too much current flow through it and it melted the enamel and then it ended up creating a short to each other. Um, how to take the windings off and how to rewind them. So in this one in this video, I'm going to show you how to attach your silicone wire leads so you can solder it to your ESCs. And then uh, pretty much it's th this is going to be just the, uh, the basic way of how to take and pretty much connect your stator different phases to the ESC. So hope this video helps you. And here is a few things that you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need the stator that you have rewound, you're going to need the three pieces of silicone. These, these actually came off the motor when I first took it apart. So these are the leads that came off of this motor. So I just saved those and I've already pre-tinned them on both sides. Um, and then we'll, and we'll, we'll see why I re them on both sides here in a second. But you're going to need your stator, your leads. Of course, you're going to need a soldering iron of some sort. And then the secret tip and the secret ingredient to breaking through this enamel. Some guys sand off the enamel, but that takes a long time. Um, and really, sometimes you still don't get a very good connection. But, um, and I did not come up with this. I read this on a forum. But uh, the secret ingredient to making sure that you get a perfect connection is headache relief aspirin, or any aspirin of any kind. Um, now, it is a pretty rough smell to smell when you actually apply solder to it, but it works like a charm. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. So we're just going to bend these phases out, or these phase leads, just like this. We're going to take our soldering iron. Make sure it's, it's pretty hot, um, because you do need to be able to flow a lot of current. And uh, we're just going to take, and we are going to get a blob of solder on the tip of our gun, just like that. And then we're just going to stick it to the aspirin. And you see all that smoke come up. But pretty much, that's exactly what you want to see. And then you're just going to take, and that's probably hard to see. There we go. So I kind of blow the smoke away so you can see it. But pretty much what this is, is it's acting like a very good... Uh, flux and as you <laughs> as you can see it's already starting to tin I hope you can see it anyway through the smoke yeah do not do this around any smoke alarm but as you can see as long as you keep that wire just coming in it <laughs> just like that in and out of that of that aspirin it gets a very, very nice, clean tin to the tips of those wires. And that's all you need right there. And we'll go back and add a little bit more, but pretty much you repeat that process for all three wires. And the smell is pretty rough, um, but you, you get used to it. Like this one took it immediately. <laughs> wow, smoky. But yeah, um, if you can, just turn a fan on you or something like that. It, it does tend to help just kind of draw that smoke away from you. Um, I don't believe it'll hurt you, uh, but it is smoke and it will make you cough if you inhale too much of it. Of course, it's smoke. But, and then you get the same smoke whenever you apply fresh solder with, with uh, the flux inside. So it's pretty much... It's the same sort of stuff. It's, it's sort of like an acidic substance. And it, uh, I mean, as you can see, I mean, just look at that. It, it's, it's tinning almost immediately. And it just kind of makes a little pool of, of like a black tar right there in the middle of that. I'm going to go back and tin this just a little bit more, get a little bit further up on that. But yeah, pretty much. You don't really move your iron. You, you, you move the motor wire. And you'll get a nice tin. For some reason, that one does not seem to cooperate. Sorry if I sniff so much. I'm actually running through some sinus problems right now. 
All right, I don't think we'll be good with that. All right, so now we're ready to move on to actually putting the leads on. So we'll come back and I'll show you how we do that. You know, it's kind of strange because this video could not have come at a better time simply for the fact of I actually burned up a motor the other day. Uh, just just had a crash and I believe it bent one of my bells and actually it, it I think it was uh, having to pull too much current to rotate and it had a lot of vibrations and everything like that and usually if you have a very close tuned quadcopter um, the D gain or the D term in your PIDs will cause it to overheat or something along the lines of that I'm not I'm not a professional when it comes to PID tuning but uh but anyway it it, it melted one of my leads, I'll actually show a picture right now. And uh, so anyway, so this is sort of a prime example. I'm actually having to use um, what, what I'm trying to show y'all here today. But anyway, let's go ahead and solder the silicone leads to this stator. So I'm just going to take my helping hands and I'm just going to mount the stator right here. And pretty much this is kind of tricky because you want a nice smooth solder joint so I'm gonna make sure that I have a really nice bit of solder on the tip of my iron um, because what actually I'm gonna to have to do I've actually let this get way too hot but uh, what I'm gonna to have to do is make sure that there is no points or no gouges sticking up because what that'll end up doing is, is it'll end up ruining the, uh, the cover that you put over so it keeps from keeps each phase lead from shorting out to each other so pretty much I have a I have a blob of solder I'm just gonna butt this up together and I'm just gonna rake the solder to it so you don't want any points like that but you also have to be fast because if you don't do it fast you will uh, you'll have a cold solder joint so that one turned out pretty good actually so now it's just a nice blob there is no points no uh, no sharp parts and uh, pretty much you just do that to all of them so get you another nice blob of solder and work as fast as you can on this but make sure you do a good job as well just kind of melt these two together just kind of whatever point comes up like that just kind of rake it down if you can and again a bulge is not a problem it's a it's, it's a sharp point kind of run your finger over and if there is a point that you end up having don't worry about it just uh, just go back with some cutters or some snips maybe and uh, and just maybe even a small file and uh, just kind of smooth it down some all right last one just gonna get a nice blob all right so that one did a little bit better for me Alright, and there you have it. Uh, simple as that. Um, that. That probably will take some practice, but uh, once you get a hang of it, it really isn't that bad. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to go ahead and jump in and do, we're not going to stop here. We're going to take some pliers, just any old pliers. These are just some cheap, multi-tool type pliers. And the reason why I've actually tinned this in is so I can grab it with my pliers. Um, and it won't fray loose or oh, any wires won't come disconnected because what we're actually going to do We're actually going to take and slide this silicone down at least this is what I do And this is why you have to make sure that you have a smooth of a connection right here as possible um, but Pretty much you're just going to take it and you're going to grip that tinned tip and you're going to take your fingernails or Your fingers and you're just going to kind of pretend like you're stripping it And then you're just going to walk that wire down and as you can see I've already covered half of the solder joint and you're just going to do that right there until you completely cover that solder joint. And that silicone is very soft. It'll, it'll stretch very nicely. And, uh, and again, while you run your fingers across that silicone, if there is any points, be careful because it will get you. I hope I did not go out of frame right there. But pretty much, I just take and I stretch that silicone down a nice length, just like that. And then now I go back the opposite way because, see, we've lost a lot of, a lot of length but pretty much it's just all bunched up so pretty much I just relax that silicone back and you will lose anywhere from a quarter inch to a half an inch of your lead but usually these things come pretty long anyway so right there is how you do it and if we still have the nice little bend because we're going to be wrapping this back 
and it'll fall in right nicely. All right, and then you pretty much just do that to all three, so I'm just going to do that real fast here. Okay, and just like that, you have also covered your connections. Now, if you want to, you can go back with a piece of shrink tubing and just for extra protection, and you can just put a small little piece of quarter inch shrink tubing over that as well. And, uh, and then I would recommend also coming back with some shrink tubing right there, uh, keeping all three of them together the way that usually motors come. You don't want them banging around or rubbing against the housing because they could eventually break through. But anyway, so pretty much after that, you're just going to take, you're going to take the base for your motor. I haven't had one right here. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and trim up, get our, get our peels out of the way. I'm actually just going to trim up these leads. Easier to push through that tiny little hole. All right. Okay, so now you've trimmed up the lead. So pretty much you just find the place that it's supposed to go through, and mine goes through that part right there. And you just take and you just simply push them through. And you want this to be pretty tight. Um, I'm going to see if I can just push this down with my fingers. I shouldn't be able to. These are actually made very well. Alright, yeah. So I'm going to have to go over there and press these down. Um, pretty much the way that I press these down is I use the same. Okay, you can either use this. Uh, you can either use the same tool that you use to wind it, or pretty much you need to find some sort of washer. That will fit right here. Uh, if I find it, I will be posting a video of how to remove the stator from the body. Um, and I'll have a few ways of doing it because I actually have this right here. This is just a little tool that I made. And again, I'll go into further depth on those when I do that other video. But for right now, you just need to find a way because you do not want to push on these leads or on these teeth because you could possibly bend the teeth. So you want to push in on this inside rim. But anyway, so I actually have a tool that I can do that with. But anyway, I'll be right back. I'm going to go press this in. And yeah, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right, and there it is. As you can see, it looks more like what you would actually get from the manufacturer. All I would have to do is just put the bell on here. And there you go. Um, except for this time, it's the nice single wound strands that you have put on yourself and uh, a fast way that I test whether or not this is shorted out and I'll go into further detail in my next video um, the next video will be how to test these uh, both for shorts and also whether the thing even runs and turns but pretty much you just want to find a way to hold it that your fingers are not touching the bell and you just want to give it a fast little spin and it should spin for about a second a second and a half it should feel really nice and smooth um, in fact, if you actually want to see what it would, well, I'll tell you what, you'll just have to come back for the next video. But, uh, but anyway, thank you for tuning in. But yeah, that is how you join the silicone leads to your, your newly wound brushless motor. Anyway, I hope this was a help. Again, stay tuned for the next video on how to test these things. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you then. Thank you. Bye.